So uh, I'll be talking about potassium disorders. Let's, con let's concentrate on hypokalemia first. Now brushing through the very important points regarding potassium. It is a major intracellular cation. Total potassium is 3,500 milli equivalent. 98% of that is intracellular. Extracellular is only 2%. Normal serum potassium concentration is around 3.5 to 5 milli equivalents per liter. Intracellular concentration is 150 milli equivalents per liter. Normal requirement of potassium is 50 to 80 milli equivalents per day. So, uh, potassium, fall in serum potassium is increased by insulin, beta adrenoreceptor agonist, alkalosis, alpha adrenoreceptor antagonist. Whereas, increase in serum potassium is caused by acidosis, hyperglycemia, beta blockers, alpha agonist, increase in osmolality and exercise. So, magnesium depletion causes inhibitory effects on the muscle sodium potassium ATP is activity which reduces the influx into the muscle cells and causes secondary caliuresis so magnesium deficiency can also cause potassium deficiency so when there is especially resistance hy resistant hypokalemia when your when the patient is not responding in spite of adequate potassium supplementation, always check for the serum magnesium levels. Coming to the ECG changes in hypokalemia, early changes are flattening or inversion of T waves, prominent U waves, ST segment depression, and prolonged QT interval. In case of severe potassium depletion, there is prolonged PR interval, decreased voltage of the QRS complex, widening of the QRS complex and ventricular arrhythmias. So, there is prolonged PR interval, slightly peaked P wave, ST segment depression, shallow T wave and presence of U wave. So, roughly approximately 1 milli equivalent fall in serum potassium will lead to 200 to 400 milli equivalent body potassium deficit. So, which also means that if you supplement the patient with around 200 to 400 milli equivalent of potassium, the potassium, serum potassium level will increase only by 1 milli equivalent per liter. So, coming to the treatment of hypokalemia, if the serum potassium is between 3.5 to 4 milli equivalent per liter, no potassium supplement is required. Increase oral intake of potassium rich foods, especially like fruits like banana and coconut. Add potassium sparing diuretics or decrease the dose of diuretics. If your potassium is between 3 to 3.5, treatment is selected for high risk patients, risks of arrhythmias like congestive heart failure, digitalis therapy, history of acute MI or ischemic heart disease. If the serum levels are less than 3 milli equivalent per liter, the patient needs definitive treatment. So, you need to know the names of certain hypokalemic syndromes. One is Kittelman syndrome. It is a defect in sodium chloride co-transporter. Then, Barter syndrome. It produces a situation similar to loop diuretics. That is, it is defect in sodium potassium chloride co-transporter, renal outer medullary potassium channel potassium and chloride channel. Uh, Liddell syndrome is a defect in epithelial sodium channels. So these are the names of hypokalemic syndromes which you need to know for your exams. So the difference between Barter syndrome and Gittleman syndrome, the age of onset is usually during neonatal period or infancy. Uh, later Gittleman's presence in later childhood. Right. Polyuria polydipsia is present in Barter syndrome and it is rare in Gittelman syndrome. Dehydration and titany is uh, dehydration is present in case of uh, Barter syndrome and absent in case of Gittelman syndrome. Growth retardation is present in case of Barter syndrome and it is absent in case of Gittelman syndrome. 
urinary calcium is normal or high in case of Bartter syndrome, but low in case of Kittelman syndrome. Or uh, nephrocalcinosis, that is kidney stones, are present in neonatal Bartter syndrome and absent in case of Kittelman syndrome. Uh, urinary prostaglandins, very high or normal. High or normal in case of Bartter syndrome, whereas they are normal in Kittelman syndrome. Response to pro, uh, PG synthetase inhibitors like indomethacin, the response is very good in case of Bartter syndrome and very rare in case of Gittermith syndrome.